In today's video, we'll be learning something new. We'll be discovering an, an alternative building technology that I haven't showcased on the channel. And to do that, uh, we have a guest. My name is Nick Mema from Property Noma. My name is Samson Ontweka from Start Somewhere. Yes, so Sam, uh, we have your new material, your new alternative building technology, and we are so excited to learn from you. And so kindly explain to us what this material is that is uh, in front of us. Yeah, the material that you see in front of you is known as the twist block. The twist block is a building block that is ut uh, utilized in the Kenyan uh, market in, of construction. It is uh, produced within Kibra and uh, it is adapted locally and externally uh, uh, outside the, the cities of Nairobi. Uh, to begin with, uh, the organization is known as Start Somewhere. It is a German-Kenyan organization uh, which produces the blocks locally to offer employment opportunities to the guys within the slum and also uh, to be able to utilize the, the, the blocks into the construction site in the sense that uh, you're able to impact uh, the life of the people by uh, giving them a skill. Yeah. I'm also curious to learn what inspired them to get started in Kenya and also in particular why they chose to set up their factory in Kibra. Uh, the story of Start Somewhere dates back to 2011 when a German architect by the name Oliver von Mann happened to visit uh, Nairobi. Uh, by then he was doing his master's thesis in the architectural uh, profession and he happened to visit Kibera. That is where uh, the idea came about. So in his thesis uh, he featured ways of coming up with an affordable building solution for the people of the slum that is able to provide uh, an option for a better, safe and secure house uh, that is affordable to the, to the normal uh, person living in the slum area. That is what inspired him to come up with, to, to design the twist block and eventually uh, bringing it to market by 2018. Okay. Yeah. For you guys, this is going to be a four-part video series and this is part one where we'll primarily talk about the production process of the twist blocks. In part two, We'll discover a residential house, uh, a maisonette built, built using the twist blocks that will come in part two. And in part three, we'll discover two schools that were also built using the same technology, multi-story uh, schools. And in the final uh, part of the video series, we'll showcase an upcoming project that will be built using the twist blocks. So for now, Sam, uh, kindly tell us the features of the twist, the block. twist blocks. Uh, as you can see, uh, this is the block itself. So I want to take some measurements for, for the sake of the camera. So it's around 500 mm. So it's half a meter in terms of length. Yeah, let me use this one. It's around 500 uh, meter in terms of length. Its width is 250 mm. Then it, its height is 175 mm. So it's purely... Uh, concrete block, uh, the materials are gotten locally, uh, like for instance we use class 42.5 cement, it's a high strength cement that we use in, our, in the production of the, of the twist block, in the sense that uh, we want uh, the blocks to be strong, and then uh, we use uh, chip, chips, chips are gotten locally from Katani, and we use from gauge 6 to gauge 10 mm, then again we use river sand, river sand is collected from Kajiado or Ad River, then it is delivered within the factory. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we consume water. Water is used in the mixed design of the, of the blocks. So those are practically the material that we use. The block themselves, uh, the concrete that we produce eventually is class 20 concrete. And the blocks have a compressive strength of 9.2 Newton per millimeter square. Yeah. Okay. And what is the durability, like the lifespan of the blocks? Well, uh, this is class 20 concrete, and with, with concrete, it gives you a durability of the, a lifespan of from, uh, from 50 to 100 years. So that is, that is if it's properly maintained, not being act or something of that sort. If you properly maintain it, it could serve you up to 100 years. Okay. Yeah. Now, how do you do the stacking process for these blocks? Uh, just to explain in a, in a nutshell how we do the, the laying of the blocks. Like for instance, if you can see, uh, these are the special features of the block. That is why we call them the, the interlocking blocks. They are, no, they are known as the interlocking fins. And 
how we do the stacking if you can see uh, this is the head of the block and this is the tail of the block so the tail is meant to go into the head of the block like the way i've, I've just stacked it and then for the for the other course that is the second course you have to do it uh, in the opposite direction so the head has to face the opposite direction directly on top of the two fins so that way then i'd want to also lay this side so practically that is how we do the the stacking of the blocks yeah but first you have to ensure that the area is uh, is very very level before you do that so the, for the third course also the head has to face the opposite direction that is why we are stacking it that way we call them the twist block because now they allow you to to be able to twist your walls if you want so you're able to maximize on the on the on the side of the land yeah so, so this makes it easier to make a round shaped uh, yeah structures. yeah so uh, the head and the tail it, it gives you that flexibility to tilt uh, around it could it can give you a very very circular structure if you need yeah. that is why the 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 brand is twist twist block mm -hmm. uh, it is very common commonly used in kibra because in kibra their land they don't have regular shaped land yeah. So the people who adapt them into construction, they're able to maximize on their space of land. Yeah. And they are they use it to their advantage. Okay. Yeah. So the blocks are hollow in nature also, if you can see. So the hollow nature of the block allows you to mostly pass your columns and the beams. Mm -hmm. And then again, uh, they allow you to pass your electrical conduits. They allow you to pass your plumb pipes so that you don't end up Hacking your walls and then replastering your walls again. Yeah. If if you have realized that uh, we have not used mortar in doing the interlocking of the blocks, so you you as a client, if you end up utilizing the block, you'll end up saving in terms of the mortar that you could have used to do the the joint work of the block, and also on production of the of the blocks, we ensure that the blocks are very very smooth, so that the client does not end up replastering their wall or plastering their wall again. So you save in terms of mortar, the plaster itself. The formwork for the co for the columns and the beams, and also the time. As you can see, we've just stacked it very very fast, so it's a very very speedy construction process. Uh, so you will be able to save in terms of time, materials, and formwork majorly. Yeah. yeah. Just as a, as an example, yeah. Using your factory, yeah. I see you used the, the your blocks, the twist blocks, yeah, to set up the factory. Yeah. How long did it take to uh, set up the entire structure for the well, uh, the land we are standing on is a uh, is a uh, land that you, that was reclaimed from the dam. This is the Nairobi dam, so we we had to do a little bit of some groundwork. So that is what consumed most of the time. But practically, we used uh, two weeks in doing the, the the whole structure, that is from foundation to to, to completion. So uh, the setup of the factory, the way we designed it. Uh, we had uh, five compartments that is the storage area then the mixing chamber then the casting chamber then the healing chamber and the office those are the compartments of the factory and from base to to the final co construction of the of the block we ensure that uh, at the foundation we did not use concrete foundation we used a uh, concrete base plate from where we had some up ions growing uh, from the base to the structure that practically holds down the roof the walling itself was done very very fast in some three four five uh, in some uh, five days actually it was completed the entire walling of the structure yeah. and fixing of the doors the roof itself it took some time like let's say the doors and, and the windows uh, some two days and then the roof itself it took quite a while because now it had to be done to, to the structural details that were given around around four days yeah okay. just to demonstrate uh, with the block that are removed from the uh, a square meter wall i want to explain how fast it is to do the construction with the twist block so you realize that with the twist block we have some special cuttings which are which are done always on site in the other segment you will uh, you will be able to showcase it how we cut the blocks using an angle grinder this block is known as that special c block usually comes uh, are the areas where you have the openings of the doors and the windows so that is how you place them and uh, the progressive layer if you realize like for instance this is the tail of the of the of the block 
now when you when you're when you're laying the progressive layer the the head has to be on the opposite direction so that is it and then being able to, to lay the other course now the the tail goes to the opposite direction as i've just put it That is where you place now the, yeah. C, the C block. Yeah, the C block. Okay. Uh, practically, that is a square meter of a wall. Uh -huh. So this is something that we did uh, in the previous uh, days uh, to be able to compare uh, the costing for the square meter of a wall and the costing for the for the square meter of a twist block. So the wall itself we plastered on, only on one side. We gave it a, a smooth plaster. If you're able to showcase here. You'll be able to see we did some opion. This is how we do the convection of walling in our construction industry. So it consumed around 15 blocks of it and some four wheel barrels of sand uh, to do the whole work and a cement of cement of a, a bag of cement. Yeah. Yeah. And some three square three meters of opion. So it was done in almost two two and a half hours the whole of the construction of the twist of the the convectional wall and the twist block wall was done in five minutes so uh, that is why you if you are able to compare twist block and convectional building you would see the that the speed of of twist block construction is super high that is where you realize the saving well in the twist block you utilize 11 blocks in a square meter of a wall yeah yeah and talking about uh, the two building materials yeah what is the cost per square meter for the twist blocks versus the cost well, per square meter for the uh, yeah a square meter of a twist block that is material and labor inclusive it's 2400 while the costing for a, a convectional wall that is the endarugo uh, block is 3000 so you're able to save up to 600 and this is not complete because now you have to paint it again and it's only plastered in one end yeah. So if you are doing uh uh you are seeking for for a cleaner finish as a client, you love to plaster on the exterior and the interior. Yeah. So you love to incur also additional costing for plastering the exterior part. So that is just in a nutshell. And just to give a comparison, uh the twist block uh, construction uh, uses uh almost let's say uh, fifteen percent of the labor, and this one is labor intensive, let's say around forty percent of the labor. And the time of construction is very, very fast with the twist block. Okay. Yeah. And a client can decide not to do painting uh, on yeah. this wall, right? Yeah. In the most projects that we've done, uh, majorly the schools that we've developed here in Kibra, uh, most of the clients don't end up painting their walls because uh, the class 20 concrete with the cement that we're using class 42.5, it gives you this good gray finish of the block, uh, which more or other most of the clients like it. But eventually, uh, we have other clients who prefer to have uh, some painted of the blocks so that they're able to distribute the, the blocks, the colors of the block into the walls, and, they, uh, and they're able to get a nice pattern if they want. Yeah. yeah. So you can do the custom color variation for the clients? Yeah, yeah we do custom color variation for the client. All right. Yeah. So Sam, I think you, you, we can now do the tour of the factory where we learn about the production process in the twist blocks. Okay, thank you. Let's yeah. go to the factory. My name is Chris, I'm the workshop manager at Kibera East Factory. Welcome, I'm going to show you the processes and how we come up with the twist block. Okay, so where does the production begin for the twist blocks? Yeah, basically production begins uh, in the morning. Uh, we report at 8 and uh, what we do in the morning is we demold the previously casted uh, uh, twist blocks. Uh, this block, uh, after it has been casted, it has to remain in the mold for at least 18 hours before being demolded. So we demold in the morning. Yeah. Uh, that is uh, after this block has again enough strength to stand on its own. Uh, that is 18 hours uh, after the pre previous casting. Yeah. So we demold. Uh, so this is our demolding area. Uh, after demolding, uh, we clean the molds. 
and then uh, after cleaning the molds, we oil them. Uh, oiling, uh, the advantage of oiling is that uh, we make sure that when we are casting, after the blocks have hardened, uh, it is easier to remove. Yeah. So that it, is, it does not stick on the on the mold, which may cause uh, the mold to be hit with a lot of force, and yeah. uh, then we end up breaking, uh, or, or also the the blocks break. Yeah. Yeah. And tell us what your team are currently doing. Yes. Uh, so here, uh, this is uh, Boruti, also part of the production team, and uh, Manoa. Here what they are doing is they are arranging and uh, cleaning the molds, ready for oiling. After oiling, they will uh, remold the, blocks, the, the molds back together uh, so that they, uh, they are uh, ready for casting. Yeah. So here, so these are... This is not clean yet. This one is a already uh, oiled mold. So uh, for the mold, we have the top. This is the top. Uh, we have the bottom part. And this is the inner part here. So this and this is mold. now where the concrete is poured. Yes, this is where the concrete is poured. After uh, getting the molds back together, yeah. we come up with this. Okay. Yeah. So this one, uh, like this one, is ready to receive uh, concrete. Uh, this one is ready. Uh, it has been oiled, it has been tightened, and uh, it is ready to receive uh, concrete. Yeah. Uh, so after having our uh, molds ready like this, uh, the first process again, uh, we have to heat our uh, river sand. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I'll take you through the materials that we use. Yes. So the materials, the, the materials that are used for coming up with the twist block include uh, river sand, uh, coarse aggregates that are of six to ten millimeters in size, and uh, we have cement and of course water. So after coming up with the mixed design in the morning, uh, before before that we have to ensure that uh, our moisture content uh, is at par with the mixed design. So. The first thing that we do, we have to do a moisture contest, content test. Uh, that is, we heat uh, an, an amount of uh, river sand uh, in the microwave. Uh, that's uh, if it is wet, then we put it in the microwave for some 10 minutes in order for it to dry. Then we, we do a moisture content test. Uh, that is uh, the, wet, the wet mass and we, uh, we aggregate it with the dry mass so that we have a percentage of the moisture content that is with presence in the, in the river sun. Uh, after that, we, uh, we know the amount of water that we have to use in our mixed design for the day. So that process is done each and every morning uh, so that we have a consistent uh, outcome in the blocks. Okay. So uh, yeah, that's, what, uh, that, that, that's the process of uh, coming up with the moisture content and the amount of water that we have to use for the day. Yeah. Yeah. So after doing that, uh, we have our mixes ready. Mm -hmm. We'll uh, batch them uh, by weight. Each and every material is batched by weight. Uh, that is uh, the cement, the river sand, and the coarse aggregates. Okay. So now that we have the uh, the the amount of water that we have to use, mm -hmm. uh, we have a particular mix design that we follow. That is the weight the weight of all the materials. Mm. So the only thing that changes is the amount of water. Yeah. Yeah. So that is all done to ensure that you get quality plus yeah. 20 co concrete. Exactly. So uh, since uh, uh, by design, after the, the design that was uh, that we use, uh, it has a, like I've said, there's a class 20. Yeah. So in order for us to have a consistency uh, in quality, strength, and all the, uh, the, yeah. all the properties that we require for our twist block, we have to ensure that... Uh, the process here, it is consistent. I think that the weight of all the materials each and every day is consistent. Yeah. So that, that is why we do the weighing of each and every material. Yeah. Yeah. What happens after the weighing? Uh, after the weighing, uh, we do the mixing. Uh, that is, uh, we, 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 we have already, when we have already done the weighing, here is our mixer. Yeah. Uh, we do the mixing, we start by pouring water. The water that we, uh, the amount of water that uh, is in the in the design, that that is depending if the 
river sand is wet or it is dry. So we, we use the amount of water that we found. So we put water, then cement, then uh, put uh, coarse aggregates. We wait for it to mix uh, uh, harmoniously. Then we introduce the river sand. Yes. So we wait until we have a consistent mix each and, uh, each and every time we do the mixing. Yeah. So one mix uh, gives us around six blocks. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So you, this is done to ensure the workability of concrete. Yes, exactly. Very, uh, uh, of course, sometimes we have a, we, we may have a, a challenge in uh, workability. So the person who is in charge here has to ensure that uh, the guy is, who is the guy who is going to cast is not having a difficult time. Yeah. But also making sure that uh, the quality is not. Uh, 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 it's the same. Yes. But uh, workability is, uh, is is also something that has to be looked upon. Okay. Yeah. Uh, after doing the mixing. Yeah. After doing the mixing, uh, we take uh, the we, we, we using our trolley here and the basin. Yeah. So we pour the mix in the basin and uh, we bring it here to the casting casting area. Okay. So this is our ready mix that has been brought here ready for casting. Yeah. So here is our vibrating table where we do our casting. Yeah. What is the function of the vibrating table? So the vibrating table ensures that uh, when, while we are casting, it removes the air waves. Uh, uh, when it removes the air waves, it ensures that the blocks uh, gain strength, enough strength and enough density. Uh, uh, vibra vibrating also ensures, uh, it also uh, works the same as uh, compaction. So its advantages are ensuring that the blocks uh, come out uh, with a smooth surface and uh, it will gain uh, enough density and removes uh, possible air voids that will make our, the finish of the block otherwise. Yeah. yeah. So just using uh, like an example, mm -hmm. uh, you are, you are, we are trying to achieve this kind of finish. Exactly. So, blocks. yes. Yeah. So, so that in case someone doesn't want to paint, yeah. they have a, a little... Uh, so it ensures that... Uh, uh, when we vibrate, to ensure that the blocks are of good finish. Uh, that is why we vibrate. Okay. After uh, the block is uh, successfully casted into, and it is, uh, we make sure that the top uh, flashes with the, uh, so that we don't have protruding uh, something on top of the block. We have to ensure that the block is smooth and of good finish. So uh, the guy who is here uh, is trained to do that, and. Uh, uh, he knows exactly what is supposed to be done so that uh, all blocks come out with a good surface. After that, the blocks are taken to storage area. Yeah. Here uh, in the storage area, these are a few blocks that we have done this morning. Uh, as we will continue to do others. Uh, here, uh, the blocks will stay here for at least 18 hours. Uh, 18 hours because uh, we give the blocks time to gain enough strength for them to stand on their own. Yeah, so after 18 hours, that is maybe tomorrow in the morning when we, uh, when we come, in the morning, uh, the blocks will have gained enough strength so that when we demold them, uh, they don't break easily. Yeah, okay. so uh, uh, after demolding them from here, then we took, take them to the main storage area, which is outside there. Yeah. So this... Uh, so here... Here is where uh, the curing is done. After the molding inside, uh, we put them here for at least uh, 14 days. 14 days uh, each and every day in the morning and the evening, we do curing. Uh, curing is important because uh, for, the, for, con for concrete to gain uh, standard and uh, enough strength, uh, we have to do consistent curing for at least 21 days. So here we'll do for 14 days and then to take it to the main storage area there, we we'll continue for the next seven days and the process continues each and every day. So yeah. here during the curing, yes. you will pour water? Yeah, we pour water and uh, so we we cover them with this Hessian cloth. This Hessian cloth, uh, uh, as we pour water, uh, it absorbs the water so that uh, uh, sometimes... It minimizes yeah, the evaporation. Exactly, it minimizes the evaporation. So uh, just to explain the general setup of the factory, uh, the, fastest, uh, the first side of the factory uh, is an area that is around 10 to a meter. That is where we store our, our cement. Usually we order up to 220 bags of cement from Bamburi. 
and that is where we store most of the cement. Then from there, uh, immediately, where we are at right now, is a mixing chamber. So the reason why we have a mixing chamber close to the factory is because now uh, the, the dynamics, you're able to get the cement easily and the materials easily. So this area where we are standing at is around uh, 16 square meters. This is uh, the mixing chamber. And uh, we have a very big uh, opening that is the main door. Uh, so that you're able to access the, the, the two materials, that is the coarse aggregate and the river sand. Then immediately, uh, at this point here, we have the casting chamber. It's around uh, 10 square meters also. So this is where we have the vibrating uh, table, as you can see there. We have a vibrating table and partly part of the storage area. And then the other area is where we have the, the storage area. It's also around uh, 16 uh, square meters. This is where we have uh, the storage area, and you can see most of the of the of the tables here. They also use it as a as a preparation area where they do oiling of the of the molds. On the other side, the main office and the changing area. Okay. So this is where we have the the laptop, the desktop that is to do the accounting and the bookkeeping. And then we have the the changing areas and such. Then on the other end, I want us to talk a little bit about the solar. So the solar, uh, mostly our production here, uh, we don't rely on the electricity because of the no, of the of the fact that uh, Kibera electricity is very unstable and you can't rely it in doing production of the twist block. So we we install a, a ten solar panels uh, atop of the factory. So it's it's being run. All the processes, all the production uh, processes are being run uh, by solar. It's green energy, and we have a full system. So we have the inverters there and the right. and the battery. Yeah, it's a full automation system. In case of anything, we also have a generator here, which can be able to power the production. Yeah, that is basically it. Just to explain the dynamics of the of the factory, if you can see here, this is how we do our 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 doors. So practically, we just fill one one block with concrete. And then you're able to drill into it. So we had some some river bar, D8 river bar sticking out. That is where we welded the 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 doors to. So these blocks are hollow. It's only this one which is which is filled with concrete. So the three of them, this one, that one, and the below one. So the factory itself is completely hundred percent a deconstructible factory. It means that we we can be able to salvage up to hundred percent of the twist blocks here. Then be able to set it elsewhere. That is why we call it a mobile factory. Uh, the way the roof is being held down, we have some base plates in the foundation where we have some upions running through. I don't, I don't know if you can be able to see them. Yeah, yeah. So those are the upions uh, running through from the base plate. So we have four base plates at the end of the corners. Like for this room, we have a base plate there, base plate at the corners of the room. Then we have upions from the base plate. Yeah. So they run through. It's a concrete base plate. So they run through the the hollow nature of the blocks yeah. on to, to hold down the roof. Then the roof, it's a timber roof, a timber and iron sheet roof. So it allows you uh, to firmly held it down so that it cannot be blown away by wind. So we, we've integrated the trans uh, translucent sheet to be able to ensure that we have enough lighting to the factory. Yeah. So practically that is it, uh, the setup of the factory. Yeah. Also, to add on, we've utilized uh, recycled plastics as uh, the, uh, the pavers for the, for the factory. Uh, in the sense that uh, it's affordable and it's cheap. So we didn't do a, a completely or a concrete uh, foundation for the for the factory. Uh, in the sense that uh, this is a mobile factory and when you want to move from this area, uh, we just remove our pavers and our blocks and then be able to set up the factory elsewhere. Yeah. Thank you, Sam and Chris and the entire team at Start Somewhere for showcasing your product and for taking us through the production process. We've learned a lot about this uh, new alternative building technology and we'd like to see more projects being built with them. And to do that, in the second part of this video series, we'll discover a residential house that was built using uh, the twist blocks and it's actually a maze on it. So uh, stay tuned. If you, haven't, uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, this is a good time to do so, so that uh, when that video drops, you'll be able to get notified. And with that, thanks for watching this production process video, and I'll see you on part two. Thank you.